Ready. Let me open up this real quick. Okay. Let the game begin. Okay. I'm going to begin today. There was a, um, a video that Brother Robin sent me a couple of days ago. Um, I want to open up with a portion of the video. I'm going to also put the link in the chat so that each one of us has access to this. This It's a clip. I, I can't remember how long the clip is, but it's. Uh, I'm starting to learn more and more every day that when the minister speaks, He's speaking in the language of formulae, meaning his his words are three dimensional, or you could say four dimensional. Some some scientists say fourth. The fourth dimension represents time. But feeding on the minister's words, every time you go over his words, you're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm learning. Not that I didn't have an appreciation for the minister's words. I'm having a greater appreciation for his words now with respect to mathematics, physics, and science. Because in embedded or encoded, um, I'll give you this example. Who here has seen that movie Contact with Jodie Foster? Okay, highly recommend you see the movie Contact with Jodie Foster. And the reason why I bring this up is in the movie, um, she's trying, she's, she's what you call a radio astronomer. And what she's trying to do is she's trying to uh, make contact with extraterrestrial beings. And then what happens is at one point in time, she starts to receive um, a signal. And the signal, it just sounds like just um, like beeps. But the beeps are occurring in the form of prime numbers, which implies that the source of that signal is a, a, um, a civilization that has an understanding of mathematics. So they start to record all this information, then they receive, they receive um, on the signal, there's another signal uh, of, a, of, a, of a video clip. And the video clip was, was from something that was, the, the, it was the first televised uh, Olympics. And they found another signal hidden in that signal. And it, the, the signal hidden in that signal showed them how to build something that would be like a mothership. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Now, I say all that to say this. If we take the minister's words just on face value and on the surface, then we won't get to the, the, the layers of meanings underneath. The minister's word, and I'm gonna say it like this, and you know where I'm going, I think, Sister Belinda, the minister's words are the fundamental. <laughs> Layered in the minister's words, you can take what he says here and take something over here, and then when you connect together, it gives a deeper meaning as to what he's saying. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay. So, Sister Zaki is coming in. So I'm going to play this clip, and then we'll cover any thoughts or questions, and then we're going to get into the concept of fractions and how fractions can be used as a demo kit to give us a better understanding of ourself, a better understanding of the tone scale, and a better understanding of the tech in general, okay? The name of this clip is, it was called, Is There Reincarnation? And from my, from my understanding, it's dated February 2nd, 1983. The clip that I'm, I'm playing starts at the timestamp of three minutes and 20 seconds, okay? If there is nothing new under the sun, then there's no one really new under the sun. <laughs> now, what do you mean there's no one really new? 
Oh, it's so marvelous. Beloved, listen. You are birthed out of your mother's womb into the mind of God. The Quran and the Bible says the heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. Who created all of this wonder? You say God did it. The Muslims say Allah did it. Very good. The Hebrews say Yahweh did it, but we all know who we mean. That one divine, mighty, supreme being. All right. Created all of this. This represents the thinking of the God, the will of the God, the way of the God, the law of the God, and the characteristics of the God. So when you birth into the world, the world starts stimulating your mind, producing thought in you. Now, if you are exposed to what God created, you begin to question the light, the darkness, the change of seasons. How does this grow? What makes this different from that? Now, God has you in his mind. You can't get out of his mind. Now, some of us don't grow, but to a lesser level, because we're not seeking higher development. So we only get what we seek. That's why Jesus enunciated the principle, seek and you shall find. Now, as black people, you see, you are not seeking higher things, so you feed on low things. Mm. And you live what kind of life? Low A life. low life. Why? Because that's what you're calling for. If you are not calling for something higher, you won't get something higher. So if you love to party, boogie, get on down, well, that's all you find is a party because that's what you're looking for. Where's the party, man? Here's one over here. Let's see if we can crash. Where's the reefer, man? Well, it's over here. You know what I mean? Where's the woman, man? She's over there in the bar. And that's what you're looking for? That's what you get. But now there are those whose minds travel on a higher plane, still in the mind of God. There's something to entertain you from the least to the greatest. And when your mind aspires to greater things, you reach out on a higher level. And since thoughts are things, and every great man who ever lived is not great because he was black or great because of his color, he was great because of what he did. And when you do things, your thoughts and your actions and your works live long after you are gone. So when you aspire to higher things, you reach a level where you attract those kind of thoughts of men that lived in this universe before who were on that plane. And then all of a sudden, your mind is functioning on a new level. And you say, wow, where did that come from? It ain't nothing new. It's been here all the time because there's nobody got out of the mind of God until this day. <laughs> oh, brother, <laughs> one on the scene today who declares that he can make a new heaven and a new earth. And this is, this is really wonderful. And the scripture says in that day, you see all the old prophets walking around. Not David walking around in the same old body of David. The body of David, the prophet, is back in the earth, gone, finished. But the mind of David is right out here because David got that mind feeding off of the universe, its law, its function, and the suffering of his people. And the mind of David is available to you. The mind of Jesus is available to you. The mind of Muhammad is available to you. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, and God has never wasted the mind of any of his righteous servants. It all depends on what you want out of life, whether you can reach up and attract those kind of thoughts into yourself then you become that man again. And David lives, and Moses lives, and Jesus lives, and Hannibal lives, because today God is feeding you with a knowledge to make you reach out 
beyond the low level life that you've been living all your life, you have the ability now by your suffering to attract the highest thoughts that have ever been thought by thinkers. They're there. Go get them. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. Mm. You've been here before. Mm -hmm. Not you, but the thoughts that you think they're not old. They were fools like us before. They'll never be fools like us again because God is going to erase foolishness. Oh, yeah. You're not the first free. You're not the first thief. You're not the first fornicator and adulterer, liar and pimp that's been here before because there's nothing new under the sun. But the scripture says, behold, I make all things new. So something new is going to come up today under the sun because that new thing is going to replace the old sun with a new sun, a new life, mm -hmm. a new heaven and a new earth. And the former things shall indeed pass away. Wow. Powerful words, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Would you... Uh, it I'm, I'm currently trying to finish up uh, organizing the transcript, putting in all the punctuation marks and everything, because when you pull it off of um, YouTube, you get it just as one blob of, of dialogue. And as soon as I can finish putting the, 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 the punctuation marks to the best of my ability, I'm gonna send this out to the believers so you actually have the transcript that goes along yes. with his words. Excellent. This right here, it, this right here is a study guide. This right here, this right here is profound. Yes, it is. Um, does anyone have anything they would like to add before we go forward based on the minister's words? Um, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I, I was, wow. I can bear witness to, and I know all of us can bear witness to our thoughts when we were in the world. And what I called for, that's what I got. Mm -hmm. That's why I was there in that world until I got tired of it. And I started calling for something higher. And that's when that came. That's when the teachings of mm -hmm. the Muhammad came to me. Yes. So I bear witness. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you. Go ahead, Sister Melanie. Sam Lakeham, when I was listening to it, I just thought of the um, the verse in the Holy Quran where it says uh, believers ra ranging in rank and the different ranks. And as he was talking about, like how you are and who you are, that we're all under God, but but we're at different levels and we call for different things and we get things on that level. It just took me to the Holy Quran, those ranking in ranks. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So. Thank you. And Sister Jacqueline. Yes, sir. Did you just record from your location? I this I'm checking this out. I don't know what this is. It's asking so, me for ask you for permission to record. Yeah, I and I I I hit yes. If that's the case, if anyone wants their own recording, then just go through Zoom and and, and request. I think I might be able to just hit the thing and then you can just record it to your own computer if you want. Wow. Yes. Sir. So I wasn't aware that you could do that. I just became aware. <laughs> wow. Hey. Um, okay. Oh, I got, I, here come the requests. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, sir. Well, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Brother Luke, Paul, this is my first time uh, actually hearing that. Thoughts are things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Yes, ma'am. I took that video because uh, Brother Robin sent it to me, and I'm parsing it. I'm I'm breaking that apart. Mm. I'm breaking it down. So, uh, go ahead, Sister Denise. Yes, sir. I was thinking in in Scientology why when you're in the birthing area and the child is coming forth, why. <clears throat> why it needs to be silence mm -hmm. in the room. 
as as I was listening to the minister talk about us being, we come to birth, but we're birthed into the mind of God. I, it, excuse me if I chew one part at a time, because this is like a full course meal. Yes, ma'am. And then, and then you taking carry outs, you know, you taking stuff home. Yeah, all y'all all y'all got your recording, so you can take your little uh, book at home with you. Yes, sir. Yeah. But I, uh, that's that's what I thought about why it's important to be quiet while the birthing process is uh, going on. And then another thing I thought about uh, dealing with the with the with the mind of God, I thought about the transfiguration, what He's talking about. Uh, and sometimes we say things, and we, you know, we don't know where that came from. <laughs> because we're we're studying and and a lot of things is is taking hold of us and sometimes unless we start talking you know sometimes I can't I, I don't know if the minister said it I know I heard it somewhere and it's like we imprint stuff on us and sometimes we may not know and that's why I'm thinking about how to give birth to a God when we when we give him birth uh, you know, we have to really think about what we're doing. And if we uh, want to some more Farrakhan's and Elijah Muhammad and everything that our minds have to be focused on that. That's what I was thinking as as the minister was blowing away <laughs> at us. Yes, sir. Thank you, yes, ma'am. Thank you. What 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 is what are two of the, the main elements of an engram? Two of the main elements of an engram. Is it unconsciousness and pain? Uh, we could say that, we could say that. Uh, you, have to, you have to have unconsciousness. You have to have the pain. But the, the, let's, take, let's take it a step further. Those, those two are correct. You have to have those two things. I was looking more along the lines of you have to have a circuit. Mm. And since there's no mystery God, a circuit doesn't come out of thin air. There has to be a person or a valence, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you do have to be unconscious. And, and that situation will produce pain, which reduces, uh, or as he says in Science of Survival, attenuates the analytical mind in order for that reactive mind to start recording, correct? Yes. So in childbirth, the minister says, and I'm trying to think what study guide he's, he, I know he says it in the self-improvement speech, if I'm not mistaken, he says, the mother goes through pain, but if you can talk to the baby, the baby will tell you it's going through some pain as well, right? Right. So the baby's going through pain. That means at that moment in time, on the level of Dianetics, that that baby's analytical mind, what, whatever level it may have at that time, is going to shift to the reactive mind. And whatever is said during childbirth is going to be recorded as the first engram. Mm -hmm. So when the scripture says man is born into sin and shaped into iniquity, we could look at that from the standpoint of being born into the first engram, because that engram will be the basic basic that's going to cause something else down the road, correct? Yes. 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 Very good observation. Anyone else? All right. So I'm just wrote down a little bit of what the minister said, and then we're gonna. This is just laying laying the foundation. He says, "You are birthed out of your mother's womb into the mind of God." The Quran and the Bible says that the heaven and the earth declare the glory of God who created all this wonder. You say God did it. The Muslims say Allah did it. Very good. The Hebrews say Yahweh did it, but we all know who we mean, that divine, mighty, supreme being. So Allah created the whole thing. The key point that I want to address with regards to today's presentation is where he says that this, and I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about the universe, what Allah has created, represents the thinking of God, the will of God, the way of God, the law of God, and the characteristics of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So when you have been birthed into the world, the world starts stimulating your mind, producing thought in you. Now, if you are exposed to what God created, you begin to question the light, the darkness, the change of seasons. How does this grow? What makes that this different from that? Now, if you notice, let's, let's, let's connect this to the Holy Quran. In the Holy Quran, there are many places where Allah says, and we give, and we uh, allow the water to flow from point A to point B, and we have the ship sailing on the water. And for this, there's understanding for those who mind or for those that understand. So Allah gives us an assortment of what we could call parables. That's the language of Islam. But we know the word parable in Arabic is equivalent to the demo kit of Dianetics, correct? Yes, sir. So if we were to look at the different parables, for example, if we look at from betwixt the feces and the blood, a drink agreeable to the drinker. And perhaps if we were to just pull up a video on YouTube and just type in how is milk produced in a cow and just watch that video, we would learn a great deal about ourselves and our Islam if we looked at that from the perspective of that being a parable. Does that make sense? Ooh. Because one of the, the first lessons that it can teach us is that whether a situation is bloody or I'll use the, the, the clean word crappy, mm -hmm. something good can come out of that. Right, right. Mm. So crappy people or crappy situations and bloody situations can still produce something of benefit, correct? Mm -hmm. so, now, so now that becomes a picture. But the minister has told us that the more you go into the picture, he says the picture doesn't represent the truth, but the picture contains the truth. And as the, our thought increases, the more we reach into the picture, the more truth we can extract. Does that make sense? Yes, and, sir. And he says that on page 19 of Closing the Gap. Okay. So whenever we have these demo kits, if we go back to the beginning, go over it again and pick up whatever additional data we can contact, every time we go deeper into the picture, we'll extract more and more wisdom. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. sir. Okay. So then by doing that, we are actually doing the same thing that the Savior was described as doing by Mother Tainan Muhammad when the question was asked, does the Savior still study? And the question is, yes. And she said, and I'm paraphrasing it, that he's constantly going into the darkness and bringing up things to view, correct? Yes. So then if we're studying, we're going into the darkness of our own mind. And we're drawing up stuff from the darkness of our own mind and bringing new thoughts into view. Does that make sense? Yes. And what happens to our tone level as we start to see new thoughts coming from within ourselves? Goes up. Our tone goes up. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is why it's 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 it behooves us to constantly study. The more we study, the more we see. We're expanding the diameter of our thinking, and increasing the circumference of our activity. Correct. Yes. And the more we study, we'll attract like minds. And then now we can share with one another so that I benefit from your thoughts, you benefit from mine. We're all benefiting from the mind of God. And what happens? We're all evolving into the mind of God, which means we're becoming God-like, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Then he says, now God has you in his mind. You can't get out of his mind. Now, some of us don't grow, but to a lesser level because we're not seeking higher development. So we only get what we seek. It says water seeks its own level, correct? Yes. yes sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why they also say, be careful what you ask for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the question I, I, would, I would propose is if the universe represents the thinking, the will, the way, the law, and characteristics of God, then the study of mathematics, physics, and science, which I'll represent as M MPS, represents 
his thinking, his will, his way, his laws, and his characteristics. Can we agree to that? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So then could we say that he expresses these qualities through the language of symbols, numbers, and letters in the form of equations or formulae? Could we say that? Yes. Because if the universe and everything that takes place in the universe can be described using the concepts of mathematics, physics, and science. And if equations are the language of mathematics, physics, and science, then these equations have to express his thinking, his will, his way, his laws, and his characteristics. That being said, mm. could, could it be said that the study of mathematics, physics, and science is a dialogue or communication with Allah. Yes, sir. Just something to think about. Mm. So in increasing our understanding of mathematics, physics, and science, are we aligning our mind with his mind? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Sister Denise. Oh. Um, Brother Lukman, I, I was... I was thinking, you know, if we're born into the mind of God, I mean, what happens to us? You know, between that and being born into the mind of God, I guess it would depends on who our teacher is after we come to birth, mm -hmm. uh, the, the natural birth, mm -hmm. our mother or whatever we're exposed to that um, if we don't, we're not in Muhammad University or schools of thought that will continue that mind of God thinking his way, his law, that we'll, we, we have to catch it up somewhere, right? Like we're doing now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I'm, cause I'm thinking it's like, Ooh, that's wonderful. The mind of God. Oh, what happened? <laughs> well, how many of us, how many of us here were born into a family of, of, of clear parents? <laughs> None of us. No, sir. So we were we were born into sin, and we were shaped into iniquity. This is this is the part of that six thousand year vacuum that the minister speaks okay. about. Yes, sir. So now, as we remove this brown germ, okay. there will come a time when our our children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, the environment that they will be born into will be will be minus that brown germ part of part of part of what we had to go through is we were born into an environment where we are already born at a deficit does that make sense yes, yes sir. you know so we had to work we had to work up just to break even before we can get on the plus side Oof. And for some of us, we've been struggling just to break even for 20, 30, and 40 years. Wow. Now, ask yourself the question. Since you've been in the nation, what have you learned from the minister since you've been in the nation? And, and look at where your level of thinking is now and ask yourself the question. Had you begin this study from the age of one to two, where would you be right now? Mm. Okay. My thought process is, if I was just to go back to college and I had this level of understanding of the tech in college, I would be a doctor right now. I would probably have a couple of doctorates right now. So I can't even imagine if I had access to this tech let's say at the age of four and five. We will all be God-like if we had access to this growing up as children. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to, to part of the answer to that question is, uh, Sister Denise, we were, just, we were just born into an environment that was aberrated, but we have the honor, I guess you could say, and we have the blessing of being part of the minds that Allah called forth to begin to build this new universe. Yes, sir. 
Brother Lukman, can I add something to that? Yes, ma'am. We had to be made a nothing people mm -hmm. that Allah will show himself to us by building us up to be the rulers, but we had to be zero. We had to be made a nothing people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's go, being made nothing is actually going up the scale. From Praise the, to Allah. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Mm. Yeah. So anyone else? All mm. right. I'm just gonna do a quick review of this. To me, this is this is a key, a key part of the Holy Quran. Um, this is the cycle of action as found in the Holy Quran. And again, I've said this a thousand times perhaps, but this is, um, I actually use this in a lot of what I study now. And it says, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, glorify the name of thy Lord, the most high, who creates then makes complete and who measures then guides. And I always look at that as a cycle of action. To create is the start, to make complete is the stop. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, to measure and guide, that is what brings about change. And on the level of mathematics, whenever we're given a problem to solve, that is our start, correct? Yes. Okay. And then when we're given a problem to solve, it is stated in the problem what the desired outcome is. That's how you make it complete. Mm. But what we have to do is we have to know how to measure and guide. And in mathematics, when you're measuring, you're just doing one of four operations or a combination of all four, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And when you add, subtract, multiply, and divide, the basic, that's the measure. Guide represents the rules that one uses when they measure. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So in the basic understanding of arithmetic, when you add, subtract, multiply, divide, there's a primary rule or a primary law that you must understand. And this law applies on every level of mathematics from arithmetic up to calculus what is that law, Sister Tina? That, is that the PEMDAS? Yes, it is. That is PEMDAS. 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 And we know PEMDAS as parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, correct? Yes, sir. That's the mnemonic device. I like Sister Tina's mnemonic device better. Sister Tina, do you remember your mnemonic device that you use? Uh, yes, sir. Positive emotions muster divine attitudes. <laughs> I, like that one. I like that one better. <laughs> muster divine attitude. Where's where's that S? What was the S? Uh, at, um, positive emotions musters divine. Attitudes, oh, the S, um, yeah. the, the S was in there. Attitudes, um, soar, soar. Divine, positive emotions, musters, divine attitude surge. Surge, there, that's what it was, surge. Mm -hmm. I, I like that one better. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Because like we say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but I don't know who dear Aunt Sally is, so I'm not going to excuse her. So I, I'm not going to use that one, but I like Sister Tina's better. <laughs> okay but now main thing is this using this ayat from the holy quran you can use this to study any any concept of mathematics physics or science okay you can use it to study any concept and i'm gonna i'm gonna go through it quickly but then we're gonna deal specifically with fractions So I call this the elements of a concept. So we start with whatever concept we want to study. That's that's the starting point. So it could be it could be electricity. It could be um, fractions. It could be trigonometry. It could be anything. It's whatever you decide to study. That is your start point. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So now 
whatever you start with, you, you take that concept and you break it down into its elements. Okay, every concept has to be composed of elements or smaller parts. Okay, it's the same. It's the same concept as when you eat eat something. If you if you take a bean pie, you don't stick the whole pie in your mouth at one time, do you? No, sir. You cut it. You cut it into pieces. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay, so you take something. You take a whole concept. In order to facilitate consuming it, you break it down into pieces. And you consume or you understand one piece at a time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. To measure could represent the operations that are a part of understanding the concept. So we deal with mathematics, we're dealing with add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If you go up to uh, algebra, you're still dealing with add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If you go to trigonometry, it's add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If you go to calculus, it's add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Who here knows how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide? Just show your hands real quick. Yes, sir. Okay, that means you already have the ability to do mathematics from the level of arithmetic up to calculus. Mm. What we have to get through is that ridge or that engram that someone planted because some of us have a fear of mathematics, correct? Mm -hmm. yes, so, sir. Why, so, why, so why do we have a fear of mathematics now as an adult? Because someone planted it when we were what? Babies. We were children or babies, okay? Mm -hmm. And that was done, that was done on purpose. Yes. So part of what the Wednesday class is, we want to use this as mathematical auditing. We want to get rid of mathematical engrams. And God willing, a year from now, we won't be dealing with fractions anymore. We might be talking about the theology of trigonometry. Mm. And all of us will be calculating sine, cone signs, and tangents of circles. Or we might be talking about differential equations or the, the theology of calculus. Ooh. But we have to believe that we can do that. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. The only reason why we can't do levels of mathematics is because we don't believe we can do it. Can do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's what trips us up. To guide could represent the rules that govern the operations. So now you have rules for arithmetic. The next level up from arithmetic are fractions. Fractions is based upon the, the rules of arithmetic, but then there's new rules that are added. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Then when you go up from fractions, you might go up to what's called algebra. And algebra is based on all the rules that come before it, and then new rules are also added. Does that make sense? So it's not the operations that are gonna trip us up. It's to understand these rules. And mathematics is unforgiving. You can only get so, so far and so high and then you will get stuck because there's a rule down here in your basics that was either forgotten or missed it would be like a, 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 a missed gradient and you can't go any higher in mathematics because of something way back here. And then once, so that's what we, that's what we coined the term equation clearing. Does anyone remember when we were doing equation clearing? No, sir. Probably about a year ago. Okay. We take the same concept as clearing a word, but we, we, we actually use the tool, but we, we clear the equations by removing the misunderstood of the equation, we're doing the same thing with mathematical equations that we do with words. Does that make sense? Mm. It's almost like well, we, we can probably, we could probably call it equation processing, I guess you could say. Have I, have I um, confused anyone yet? Can you repeat that last sentence about the equ equation processing, what equation. you said? Mm -hmm. it, when you when you when you look at what what processing is, processing based on the tech is restoring a person's self-determinism. Okay. 
And when you deal with processing, you, there's something called postulate processing. There's something called creative processing. There's many, many levels of processing. And to, to really kind of explain what processing is, you, you have a start point and then you move a person gradiently, step by step. So if a person says, I can't do, okay? Okay, as soon as they say, I can't do, that, that shows you where they're on the tone scale, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So then if you can change, I can't do to, I might be able to do. What have you just done? You just brought them up the tone scale by one degree, correct? Yes. Okay. Now they say, well, I might be able to. So then you give someone a, a, a mathematical problem and then they solve it. And some of you have had this thought in your mind when we've shared things in, on the platform. You said, is it that easy? Has anyone ever thought that when we covered something in mathematics? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So there was a thought, there was a needle in our brain that made us think that the math was complicated, but when it was shown to us on a gradient scale, we say, damn, that, that's all that is? So then you go from I can't to I might be able to, you know what, I'm gonna try this. What have we done? We're slowly going up to the gradient, up the gradient scale. And remember the, the tone scale is based on language, correct? Nullified language, negated language, and then positive language. When you get to a point where you can say, oh, I can, I can do this. If you, first we say, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this is much higher than I can't do this, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. And then when you get to the point where you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now you're up, you're way up on the tone scale. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, because I find myself saying this, and I have to contain myself not to, to sound arrogant. It's not arrogance. It's just that the little bit about the tech I understand, I don't believe there's any level of mathematics I can't comprehend. I just have to put forth the effort to study it. But I know without a shadow of doubt, no matter what I study in mathematics, physics, or science, or chemistry, I know. I have the ability to master it, but I have to do the work in order to, to master it. And that goes for every one of us. Everyone on this Zoom presentation has the ability to master the higher levels of mathematics, physics, and science. But we have to put forth the effort and do the work and do the study to accomplish that. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Sister Tina. You said that there were um, different levels of processing. Yes. Can you get those different levels again? Just the two that I'm familiar with, one's called postulate processing and one is called creative processing. Okay. Um, but there's so many, from, from, from what I have seen. Now also understand this family, everything that I have been blessed to share with the believers on these Zoom meetings, I am only four years into the tech as far as from Dianetics up to what's called the factors, that's from 1950 to 1954. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my, my age, my age with regards to the tech, I mean, I've been studying the tech since 2011, but as far as the, the amount of tech I have studied, I'm only four years into the tech because the Philadelphia doctorate course, if I'm not mistaken, was 1953 to 1954. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what the tech looked like from 1955 to 1960. Mm -hmm. And I can't even imagine what it would look like understanding that level of tech and its application with regards to the supreme wisdom that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, this tech is incredible. Yes, it is. It is. It is. But but as I as I as I've had a chance to to speak with specific individuals and go through different concepts in mathematics and whatnot, there is no doubt in my mind, everyone on this Zoom meeting can master the higher levels of mathematics. We just have to remove the I can'ts, okay? Yes, sir. And then if you follow that, that, that formula from Surah 87, IS 1 through 3, 
the end result to make complete is now you understand the concept. And one thing L. Ron Hubbard said is, he says, if, if you can't explain the concept in your own language, then you don't understand the concept. Okay. Anything before we move forward? Mm -hmm. Okay. So to understand any concept, one must first identify the elements, break the elements down. You want to understand the relationship or what's called the flow between the elements. So when we say flow, if I say, if I say, if I have a formula and I have two letters that are next to one another, if I have an A and a B next to one another, what is the relationship between the A and the B standing next to each other? What is the operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. Okay. That's the flow. The flow just means getting from this point to this point. To get from this point to this point, there is an operation that connects those two things together. So if you understand the elements and you understand the relationship that they have from, from one to another, if you understand the entire equa equation, then you understand the answer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So based on Surah 87, Ayats 1 through 3, that lays the foundation for us to be able to understand anything that we study. Elements, the, the operations, the rules, and then you understand the concept. Just, just to set an example, if we could, if, if we don't have one, then that's fine. I'll keep going. Does anyone in the room have any mathematical or scientific or any concept that they, they that they are trying to understand, but they cannot grasp the concept as of yet? Is there anything? We can kind of use this as an example. Sister Jacqueline, go ahead. You want me to give me an example or an example of something that you find difficult to understand or you or you are having trouble understanding? Mm. Well, to be honest with you, I've always had problem understanding algebra. Algebra? Yes, sir. Okay. And what it, is from it? The base, from the basic start. I've always See, so what is it about the algebra that you have trouble with? Not comprehending the, the concept and the method and the way in which you use it. Okay. Okay. Let me let me break from the, the PowerPoint for just a split second because you might not be the only one. Uh, okay, yes, ma'am, Sister Peggy. Let me go here. Let me go here and let me go here. Can everyone see my board? Yes, sir. Okay, now. What actually is algebra? Algebra is mathematics using letters as placeholders for numbers, okay? So if I say, if I say A plus B equals C, okay? That is what you call an algebraic expression. Uh, not today, not today, not today. That's an algebraic ex uh, 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 equation. Letters are only placeholders for numbers, which allows you to understand the relationship between the elements in the equation, okay? In order to solve this, you obviously would have to know what the, the letters represent, right? Okay, so if I say A equals three, if I say B equals five, Sister Jacqueline, then what does C equal? Eight. Yeah. So all you're doing 
on one level of algebra, you're just plugging in numbers. So Wait. can I ask this brother, Luke Ma? Of course. And I'm going to put my brains on display and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Are we saying that every time we see, well, how am I supposed to know in any given time that I'm doing an algebra problem that the A is, does A represent one? Does B represent two? A, the letters don't represent anything until someone assigns it a value. Aha. Uh -huh. See? Aha okay. uh -huh moment, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. sir. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> the letters, the letters don't represent anything uh -huh. until they're given a value. Okay. Okay. So, and I'll give you an example. Okay. A plus B equals C. Okay. A equals seven. B equals three. C equals what? Yeah. And look, see, you said it like it was just, yeah, that's easy. That's no good. It's, yeah, it is easy. <laughs> well, that's algebra. Wow. That's all it is. So, the, so what happens is the letter, the the letters allow us to see the, the form of the equation without the values. So, the, so, so in other words, the equation is like the DNA of, of the equation. It, it shows you how it's made up. Now, watch this. If I said, if I said this, Okay, if I say, let me get rid of this. If I said, oh, come on, let me, let me just clear this. Okay. What's going on here? I want this. Okay, A plus B equals C. If I said A is four, and if I said C is five, Sister Jacqueline, what would B? It would be nine because you assigned it. No, no, no. You, no oh, look, look oh, at the letters. Oh, the B. Oh. Yep, the B. Oh, what would the B be? Oh, my God. If A is four uh -huh. and C is five, <clears throat> what would I have to add to the four to get to five? B would have to be what? A one. So that's algebra. That's all it is. Oh. Yeah, that's all algebra is. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. See? Did your tone level go up? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, sir. Great. Now there's more, there's more, but that's that's the foundation. Wow. Letters are just placeholders. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna give you an example of how you already have used algebra. Have you ever said have you ever sent a text and says ASA? Yes, sir. What does ASA stand for? As soon as. Okay. Or or some people use it for assalamu alaikum, right? Yeah, true. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you respond by saying what? WS, right? Yes, sir. Alaikum salam. Okay. Have you you have grandchildren? And great, sir. Okay. Have they ever cut up before? Oh, absolutely, sir. Did you ever <laughs> grab anything? Um... Saying anything, did you grab something to silence what was going on? Are there any law enforcement people on this Zoom? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely, sir. <laughs> okay, so when you grabbed that, wasn't that like a symbol that represent that was a placeholder for what you were telling them? Yes, yes. Okay, so that that's like spiritual algebra. 
<laughs> wow, that's you know, when I was growing up down south, when my mother grabbed the switch, the switch was a symbol that meant sit your behind down. Or she would say, you know, whenever parents call you by your initials, you know you're in trouble. So my birth name was Aunt, my birth, my birth name is Anthony. My middle name was James. So it, Anthony J, if you don't sit down, that's 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 algebra. Anthony J was a placeholder for sore behind. <laughs> okay. So, Sister Jacqueline, do you have a, a better grasp on algebra now? Yes, sir, Brother Lukman. Much better, sir. Okay. Praise be to Allah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Very welcome. That, that's wow. what I live for. I, that just made my day. Yes, sir. It made I my like, day. I like the aha. Uh -huh. I like the aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that was called, a paradigm that's called, shift. That's a, yes, it is. That's a paradigm shift. Go ahead, Sister Peggy. You're on mute. There you go. Okay. Asalaamu Alaikum. Now, I, I keep forgetting to wait to let people finish it. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is new age speak or if it's real. When I hear people say, when I hear people talk about vibrations and how they vibrate with someone else or vibrate the concept, what does that really mean? See, I have difficulty understanding that. Okay. Let's, let's look at this from the standpoint of music okay in music you have what's called from this music from the standpoint of physics which it's uh it's called acoustics you have what's called resonance and you have something called dissonance and when you have resonance because remember instruments are really based on frequency especially if you're playing string instruments or a horn or anything it's based on sound frequency does that make sense Okay, when things vibrate in, in together, that's where you get what's called melody and harmony. Does that make sense? Melody and harmony. Okay, I've got that. Okay. Think of, of how music used to sound from the 60s and the 70s. You can still listen to the music and, you, and it still sounds good to this day. Some songs are 20, 30 years old. You can still listen to it. And what effect does it have on you when you listen to it? It will take, well, it takes me back to the time that the record was mm -hmm. released. Mm -hmm. For me, the best, the best album to listen to if I'm doing work is Bob Marley's, um, what was the one, uh, what was the name of the, the, the album Bob Marley put out with Don't Worry, um, Everything's Gonna Be All Right and Buffalo Soldier. That whole album, that, that's one of the only albums I can think of where you can just put it on and listen from start to finish, listen to the whole thing. Not like the stuff today. That's, that's resonance. Dissonance is when you have two sounds that just don't sound good together. Okay. Have you ever heard a song that just, it just, you just didn't like the sound of it? Okay. Yes, that's, it. that's dissonance. Really, what you're looking at, you're looking at two different frequencies of sound. There, there is a mathematics behind the sound. And it just so happens the mathematics behind the sound is, is actually in fractions. Half notes, quarter notes, sixteenth notes. It's actually fractions. There's, there's mathematics behind the frequency. So there's certain subjects, when you hear the subjects being taught, you can sit and listen to that all day, correct? That's because, yes. that's because you're resonating with it. There's certain subjects, yeah. as soon as someone speaks about it, you turn off the video or you go on to do something because you don't want to, it, it, it just rubs, it rubs you the wrong way, correct? Correct. Okay. That's dealing with frequencies. Okay. So that's a frequency and a resonance. And I can understand that. It's, so you're telling me that if you're in vibration with something, you have resonance with it. Yes, you're resonating with it. You're, you're, in other words, you're vibing with it. You're in harmony with it. Oh, you're in harmony. Yeah, it's it's so another, that, another way of saying and you're in harmony. In Dianetics language, we could say you're in ARC. You're in agreement with it. Mm -hmm. You have affinity, reality, and communication. Because when you're listening to that music, and uh, when you listen to any music, 
and I have to use music from the the seventies or the eighties because I'm a, I'm a seventies child. The stuff today, I just I, I can't stand it. I, I hate it. Um, but the music from the, I don't hate it all. But the music for, for me, uh, my thing is Sade. I I love Sade. I'll listen to Sade all day. I can resonate with not only the sound but the lyrics, the harmonies, the melodies, the bass lines. And when you can resonate with the music, the music can take you up the tone scale. There's certain songs that can take you down the tone scale as well. There's certain sounds, certain songs, you just don't even want to hear it because it just, ah, that just, it, it's, it's like someone sticking pins in your ears. You just don't want to hear it. It's just, that's not even music. Does that make sense? Yeah, like grunge. <laughs> okay, like grunge. For those that just don't like grunge, okay? But now you can come in contact with a person and if you're tuned in to your own being, you can get a sense of that person before they even say anything. And you can get a sense of that person after they say something. Have you ever come across someone and you just in your mind, you're like, this is something about this person. I just, I don't know about this person. Yeah, it's part of your intuition, all right? We can call it, we could say it's intuition, but really on another level, we could say we're tapping into the frequencies. Because really, okay. are we physical beings or are we spiritual beings? Both. Mm. On one level, we could say both. But we're, really, we're, we're spiritual body. beings that are just using this physical body, but this physical body, body is a tool as well. We can pick up frequencies and vibrations. Mm -hmm. Does, does, does that kind of give a better understanding of frequency? Okay, as long as, as I understand, okay, I understand. But you were just saying that we were just spiritual beings. And so I'm gonna have to do that another time because I think that this physical aspect accounts for something. Oh, it does, it does, okay. it does. Because when you understand the physical body and the spirit, the spirit is energy but the physical body is, is condensed energy and both are still energy. And okay. that's, why the, that's why the spirit can affect the physical and vice versa. Oh, so you, so you say that the physical is condensed energy? Yeah, the, the physical body, because when you look at the physical body, the physical body is made up of atoms, correct? Yes. Atoms, atoms and molecules, and then you get into quarks. And all that is, is is energy that's condensed into a physical form. But the spirit is energy as well. That's remember the minister said thoughts are things. So energy just is kind of more dispersed. Yes. You can look at it like that. Okay, remember, thank you. Energy has three levels: solid, liquid, gas. It's all the same, it's all the same energy. There's different levels of content of, of um, the difference between the three levels is on the solid level, you have the you have the matter condensed into a smaller form. That's where you get your ice from. As the ice melts, it's the same matter. It's just that now the particles have more freedom of movement. When you get the gas, same same energy, more freedom of movement. Okay. Uh, Brother Lukman. Give me one second, Sister Zaki. I got Sister Tina. I got Sister Angela. And then I'll get uh, to you, Sister Zakia. Thank you. Go ahead, Sister Tina. Um, I just wanted to ask, this was dealing with Sister um Jacqueline's um what she was explaining for Sister Jacqueline. And in uh uh mathematical um expression whatever you call that mm -hmm. you um i noticed you had to have at least two you had to have two um uh in the placeholders you had to have two of the numbers in order to come up with the answer so is that how it works you have to have at least two of the numbers to come up with the answer uh, on one level, it, it kind of goes like this. If you have three variables, okay, because in that equation, we have three variables. We have A, B, and C, correct? Yes. If you have three variables, you need at least two to solve for the third. Okay. If I have four variables, I need at least three 
to solve for the fourth. So take whatever number of variables you have, and then if you subtract one, okay, if I have five variables, subtract one, five subtract one equals four, I need at least four variables okay. to solve that equation for that one unknown. When you start getting into equations with more than one unknowns, that's that's a whole that's a whole nother monster to deal with. Okay, got you. Okay. Sister Angela. As-salamu alaykum. Happy Savings Day. Happy Savings Day. Uh, I wanted to go back to the question. I think the vibration is dealing with something Sister Deborah wanted to explore on your class, inshallah, in synchronicity. We become, if anybody ever watched the Dead Poets Society, you know we always, we, we always uh, reference movies on here. <laughs> and Dead <laughs> Oh, in society, Robin Williams had the students walking in a circle. He started each of them on a different time, walking at a different pace. But by the time all four were walking, they synchronized with each other. It just happens naturally. So when we are on this vibe, we become in sync with each other where we can understand each other. And I also was talking, I don't know who, I think I was talking with my husband and we got into the supreme wisdom as far as light and sound and the cause that it traveled is interesting because when, when something travels, it can take a passenger. It doesn't have to be a person passenger. It can be an energy it can be anything. We could put like the, the 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 enemies. They figured out how to put messages subliminally in music and commercials and jingles. So they figured out that these things travel, light travels, sound travels. Mm -hmm. When the minister had his experience, he was pulled up into that baby plane by light. So these things had the capacity to not just vibrate, but be used as vehicles. And I also wanted to talk about alchemy because that seems that what the end of the conversation got into this solid, liquid, and gas, that's the alchemical process that we can take even with the teachings mm -hmm. or vibing with somebody when you hear your Sade or your Bob Marley, the alchemical process that it has in your mind helps mm -hmm. you zone or get into what you're doing more so mm -hmm. everything is truly science i just wanted to add that that's something like yes ma'am thank you sister Angela. most definitely and, and just to add on to that uh when you deal with um uh, using one medium to tr to transport another mm -hmm. if you go into what's called the study of fiber optics mm -hmm. fiber optics what they're doing is they're transmitting messages across large areas using light so that's in the fiber huh in the fiber that they got from that crash baby plane well not that only transmitted that, but, the light. right but what i'm saying is and so now they use fiber optics almost everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you no know, but the concept is the ability to transmit mm -hmm. information or right. data using right. light mm -hmm. right it's been to a lot uh sister Zakia. Yes, I'm like I was thinking about the um the music. A lot of times I used to sit and listen to music and remember when I used to get a whooping during those years when certain music is playing. So you just made me think of that, the vibrations in that type of music. Um and I just feel like you'll turn the channel. Or I remember when my mother used to play this and I can remember exactly what she's doing at that time, yelling at us, stop running in and out the house during that time that music is playing. Mm -hmm. So it just keys me in when I hear it. Mm -hmm. So that came to my mind. I'm yes, like, ma'am. Leave us alone. Most definitely. Especially if there's something playing, if there's something playing at the time that you're getting the whooping, well, you got something painful, what's happening to the analytical mind? Analytical mind shutting off, reactive mind's turning on. So now what's happening? You're recording the music. Now I'll share this with us. 
Suzanne, let me ask you this. Right. If we're sharing information, but we don't disclose the name, is that something that we can do about? Yes, you can. That's not okay. breaking the code because okay. you did not identify the person. Okay. This is this is something that was shared with me a couple of years ago. And this individual had a problem showing emotion. Okay, had a problem showing emotion. And this individual went through the process of auditing and come to find out at the time period, I, I think I think this individual had just found out their, their mother had just passed away. So already they're in a state, the mother passed away, they're, they're in an aberrated state. Does that make sense? Absolutely. At that time, when they received the news, mm -hmm. there was a song playing. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the name of the song. But I do remember that as you listen to the song, there's a phrase that said in the song in such a light manner that you can barely hear it. And the statement in the song said, big boys don't cry. Big boys don't cry. And that phrase, that was, it was very, I mean, if you didn't know it was there, even you would have missed it. Right. But this individual shared this with me and mm -hmm. I played that song. I'm like, damn, I've heard that song a thousand times. I don't ever remember hearing that statement. It just so happened at that point in time, that song was playing and it, through his processing, he was able to pinpoint that specific phrase mm -hmm. in the song and that mm -hmm. phrase in the song became a circuit. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I thought that was incredible. Oh, Absolutely. You know, when James died on Good Times, do you know the shed and grin that was released from the children at that time that watched Good Times? And I don't mean to say Good Times, I see Sister Tina Hannah. But every time when they announced that James died and that music came on right after that, mm -hmm. every person that I knew that heard that music would go right to that episode of Good Times and talk about it. Because you know that, I know one thing, James was like my father, <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, oh so, yes. And, and my father's know, so name was James. We felt the loss. We felt, we truly saw the loss. And that, and that music came right on. And that, that just proves to me that they understood the science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, well, they understood it. My, and my, my father's name is James. Wow. So, oh, oh, my, my father greatest man that ever lived love him to death but he was a no nonsense he did he didn't play there was no oh. was none of that fooling around stuff <laughs> yes, sir. go ahead sister sheena yes sir in looking at the algebraic expression um and having if there's only three um variables two of them has to be answered. Yes. It may think of ARC, mm -hmm. where there's mm -hmm. an A break. Uh, one is broken, which makes the other two broken. But once that one is fixed, the other two will be fixed and raised up on the tone scale. So it made me look at ARC as an algebraic equation mm. when we're trying to solve what's going on mm -hmm. in a relationship. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, Sister Tina. You gonna use that tonight, Sister Tina. Tell what you say, Sister Angela? I, I said, I'm going to use, I have a session I had to do with a couple, and I'm really going to use that as algebra. Yes, praise be to Allah. Yes, man. Praise be to Allah. Well, since you have to deal with a couple, do you mind if I share an equation with you that you might be able to use, Sister Angela? I got my pencil. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Here's some algebra. Okay. Okay, now watch this. Um, marriage. Mm hmm and forgive me, but I have to write this with my dog on finger. 
marriage. Am I spelling this right? Yes, sir. You got it. Marriage is what? Half. One half. Yep. Oh, this is. Write it as a fraction. Oh, I got to write it out first to show you how this works. Because okay. eventually, what we're going to do is. I'm going to show you how to take equate how to take ayats from the Holy Quran and convert them into equations. Mm. Because in algebra, one thing you have to learn is how to translate words into symbols and also how to translate symbols into words. Okay. So marriage is one half of faith. Well, the minister says that is is an equal sign, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's write the equal sign right here. Okay. And instead of writing marriage, let's just write M. Okay. So we have one half over here. And then for faith, we'll just write F, correct? Yep. Okay. So now we just took a sentence and we translated into algebra. Praise be to Allah. Okay. So now I can also say, if you understand fractions, mm -hmm. I can remove, I can multiply this F times one. And I can make this into F over two. Uh -huh. Okay, so now ma marriage is one half of faith. Ooh. Verbal expression transmitted or translated into an algebraic expression. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not going to get into all the rules right now, but what would I have to do for those that understand algebra? What would I have to do to solve and get F by itself on one side of the equation? Does anyone know? To get F by itself? Well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it. Let's subtract it, right? No, no, because you got a fraction here. So, so right. again, at, an, at another time, we'll go through all these rules. Because next year, this time, next year this time, we're going to be doing calculus, okay? So okay. You got to put F on the other side. No, you multiply both sides by two. Two, right. So what happens is two and this two do what? Cancel out. They cancel yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Which leaves me with two M equals F. Mm -hmm. So what does that teach me? That teaches me that faith, if, if marriage is one half of faith, that means that faith is actually equal to two marriages. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean two wives. Right. In order for to have faith, that means you have to have a marriage or a union with your spouse, and you have to have a marriage or a union with Allah. That's right. I thought that's what the F was representing, Fad, Muhammad. Oh, it could be. The, the, the algebra represents whatever you want it to represent. Right. That's deep. Or, or you can say, you know, since you want to go, because you want to take that route, in mm -hmm. order to have a relationship with Father, we have to have two other marriages. Mm. Minister yeah. and messenger. Angel. Okay. But the beauty of the algebra is it, it is whatever, whatever Allah, like the minister says, find the jewels that Allah shows you. Mm -hmm. See, part of the problem with marriage is we have one marriage, but we don't have the other. So we right. either connected to God and not the spouse, or we're connected to spouse and not to God. And there mm -hmm. lies the problem with marriage. You gotta have both. Right. Praise be to Allah. That's 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 valuable. All right. So, so brother Lukeman. Yes. In that fraction, when you needed to get F by itself, you multi you in you reversed it, you inverted it and multiplied it with each other in order to cancel out the two. You, so, whatever, whatever you do on one side, you have to do to the other. Mm -hmm. So instead of it being F over two, you multiplied it by two over F. No, I multiply. Really, what I'm doing is, um, um, when I multiply this by two, 
this is the same as if I pull these two, the two out, two over two equals what? One. One. Two over two equals one. Right. So really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm inputting a number that allows me to remove the denominator. Right. Okay. And if I remove that denominator, then only the F remains. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Whatever I do. But again, at another time, we'll go through all these rules and you'll understand it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's two basic rules that you got to know to to do these flip flops. Mm -hmm. We'll handle that another time. But the key is that being able to take the math and it, this is this is what we could call an algebraic theology. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. Okay. okay. And doesn't the two at the bottom of the fraction? represent how many it takes to make that one at the top what do you mean like the f over two it takes two to make the one to make the one so like the like the um fraction one half one half definitely lets us know it takes two halves to make a whole okay so it's almost like saying both individuals have to have faith yeah Absolutely. So it's, one person, one person having faith and the other person not having faith that that's not that's not that's not a union. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is that where you were going with that? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey. Okay. Go back to the. Okay. Does everyone see my element of concept? Yes, sir. Okay, Sister Tina, do you have something else? Or you, oh, you... no, sir. That's okay. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, that, okay, we'll just finish this up. So understand the rules that govern the relationship flow between the elements. And, and understand, family, that just takes practice. Mm -hmm. The more problems that you can solve, the more you'll, you'll learn the flow of the equations. And that just takes practice. Okay. So the misunderstoods. When we don't understand an equation, then there's something in the equation we don't understand. We either don't have all the elements or we don't understand the operation or the relationship between the elements. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, so the misunderstood in the equation, we could call that the devil of that equation. Mm -hmm. And if that, in, in Dianetic language, we can call that the ridge. And the ridge whatever interrupts the flow produces the dispersal. And that's why we, we disperse from our study. We stop studying. Why? Because there's a ridge. Have you ever started studying something? There's something you couldn't understand and you said to hell with, I'm not studying anymore. <laughs> okay. It was a ridge. It was a misunderstood. So when you look at a fraction, what is a fraction? A fraction is just a representation of the quotient of two numbers. It's the relationship of two numbers. Right. Okay. It means a piece that's broken off. Okay. When you have the bean pie and you don't have a knife, somebody wants a piece of the bean pie, you got to get that little hook in your hand, right? You got to break a piece of the bean pie off. Let me get right. a piece of that bean pie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're real good, you can almost get a triangular piece by the break, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but see, if you try to break my pie, that causes an ARC break with me because I don't want to shit any pie. <laughs> <laughs> in Latin, in Latin, it comes from the Latin word frangere, mm. which means breaking, weariness, illness. It also means to break or to shatter. Now, interesting, when I looked, and this is exactly how it was defined in Merriam-Webster, breaking weariness and illness, those three words appear just like that. And I said, okay, that is a cycle of action. That's a cycle of action, okay? Mm -hmm. Breaking weariness and illness. Right. I call it, I call it a break cycle. Because the start, remember, st uh, cycle of action, start, change, stop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The cycle of action starts with the break. Well, what is the break? In Arabic, it's called, it, the word is naqada. 
It means to violate, to be in disagreement, or to invalidate. Wow, that's that's right in line with the Dianetics, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, because our, our, our dramatization can start with someone violating our peace, a disagreement, or we get invalidated. One of the reasons why we're told as Muslims that we don't argue, correct? Yes, sir. Because an argument can cause us to become what? Other than our own stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. Or we argue in the best manner. Well, argue in the best manner, that's, that's using, that's when you understand the word argue from the standpoint of using truth right. without emotion, yes. Okay. To change, meaning weariness. In Arabic, the Arabic word is hasra, which means to regret, to grieve, to be fatigued, to sigh, or to be in pain. So now what happens when we get in a disagreement, someone invalidates us, they violate us, and we're in a state of, we're already in a state of grief, or we're just tired. You know, someone will say, you know what, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired, I'm too tired, I don't even want to deal with this right now. So I'm about to cut you out. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then the stop would be the illness, correct? Yes, sir. The Arabic word for illness is marid. And do we remember what marid is in Arabic? It also described what? Psychopath. Nafsi marid means psychopath. And for us, a psychopath is someone who's stuck on this time track, correct? Yes, sir. So when we deal with the, the, the break, the weariness, and the, the illness, what we're looking at is the relationship between some the relationship between being invalidated or being re-stimulated during a time period where we're already fatigued or in grief or apathy. And it actually will cause a imbalance in our thinking or an imbalance in our physical body, an illness. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All of this from the word fraction. Okay. So in the tech, what is a break? It's a sudden drop of cutting of one's affinity, reality, or communication with someone or something. It's an upset with people or things. It's called an ARC break instead of an upset because if one discovers which of the three points of understanding have been cut, one can bring about a rapid recovery in the person's state of mind. Going back to what Sister Tina said, if someone's in a bad state, we got to find out which two angles of the triangle do we have or which one that we don't have. Because if, if the problem is in communication, then we got to see if we can find the affinity or the reality. Mm -hmm or we have to find the communication to find the agreement so that we can gain the, uh, the reality or vice versa, any of those combinations. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So when an individual is at a certain tone level, they're in re-stimulation, then there's an ARC break in there somewhere. Nine times out of 10, it could be something that we said, perhaps I'm just using that for example, something we said that just irritated someone because we said it meaning one thing, they perceived it as something else because that phrase is connected to a circuit that they have. So we said it with the intention of just communicating. They heard it based on a dramatization of a circuit that they heard. So now A equals A equals A. They look at us in the present time as the person that said it in the past. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. sir. Absolutely. Okay, so once they come out, now when they respond, we say, wait, 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 that's not what I meant. Mm -hmm. In other words, we got to say, come the present time. Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we can, if we can get, if we can get them in the present time, if it was the calm that, that caused the break, we got to regain the affinity and the reality, come back to present time. And then if we can get across, this is what I meant. Hopefully that person can say, you know what? I apologize because when you said it, this is how it affected me. But we can only do that if we're in present time, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So over a prolonged period of time, in the language of the tech, that's called chronic restem. 
Restim is just short for restimulation. The individual goes into the tone of apathy and grief. Okay. Now, when you look at weariness, what is the what is the what is the relationship of weariness? In Dianetics, it says the kin was necessary to activate the engram, but what precisely could key it in at some later time when she was tired? The man threatened to strike her again and called her names. Now, how many of us have get the sense of whatever aberrations we have? seem as though they come to surface at certain periods of the day. Have, yes. we, have we seen a pattern that there's certain things we do at certain times of the day? Yes, sir, I have. Okay. L. Ron Hubbard said that that time that we do what we do is part of the engram. Mm -hmm. There are certain things we do at certain times. That's part of the, that's, that is one of the perceptics that is a part of what has us in chronic restimulation. Have you noticed that most of our prayers are done during the day? Yes, sir. Maybe the prayers are designed to keep us in present time. Mm -hmm. Okay. One day, however, the father becomes exasperated at the child the child is tired and feverish, which is to say that his analytical mind may not be at its highest level of activity. Ask yourself this question, and I and I, I definitely know we probably need some uh, root processing at the end of this. <clears throat> Us receive some of the some of the harshest whoopings when our parents were tired. Mm. Something to think about, right? Our parents were just fatigued; they were tired, and something we did caused all hell to be unleashed on us and we're thinking what i did wasn't really that serious mm -hmm. in our lifetime is that, does that shoe fit anyone's foot <laughs> yes sir okay well i know um i have done that when i was really tired i have um chasing my children maybe more than i should have because mm -hmm. i was I, I remember that yeah okay so our being tired was what we were more accessible to our aberrated state when we were tired. So something could have re-stimulated us. And what did we do? We dramatized on the children, perhaps what may have been dramatized on us. Right. Okay. So the break can cause the weariness, the fatigue, or the grief. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the words was the sigh. You know, when you go, Correct. Mm -hmm. In science of survival, he uses the word hard breathing, and that represents misemotion suppression. Something's being suppressed. When someone does something to get under your skin, you go, mm -hmm. there's something there. Something with regards to what that person just did has triggered something that's being suppressed. He calls it misemotion. Scientists of Bible, page 91. And the illness breaking causes the weariness. The, the weariness can cause the psychosomatics. That's the end of that cycle, the break cycle. So an ARC break, which is invalidation or upset, leads to the individual being fatigued, upset, full of grief. And this translates into the body on a biochemical level which is what? That's the psychosomatic. Some of us have chronic illnesses because we are in constant re-stimulation based upon being constantly in what we could call an ARC break, correct? Okay, yes, sir. Some of us are, they call it chronic fatigue syndrome, right? So some of us are in chronic fatigue syndrome and it could be because we're in a chronic restimulative uh, situation. Mm. So the fatigue is not, might not be, it could be dietary, but it could also be that in our environment, there is something that has us in a chronic restimulation that's producing the chronic fatigue. And the chronic fatigue is going to produce 
the psychosomatic illness. Mm. So basically, our thoughts become chemicals. The chemicals produce the illness. Okay. Mm. So now let's dig into the fraction real quick. So the concept of a fraction is translated into a demo kit to illustrate an individual as a fraction. Now remember the word fraction means to be broken. So when we're dealing with fractions, we're dealing with on one level, people or individuals that are broken. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Again, we're not gonna learn it all today. Inshallah, we'll do a part three next week. But... So what does this represent on a mental level, fraction? When there is a break, what does that represent? So here's where we dig into the demo kit. <clears throat> okay. A fraction can represent a broken individual. How many of us, we're not as broken as we used to be, but we still got a little, a little broken, brokenness in us. Can we all agree with that? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so we all have we all still have some breaks in there somewhere. Oh yes. Okay. So that would mean that we're not whole yet. We're still divided into parts, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I think it's the book of James in the Bible. It says that the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone here is clear. So all of us are still unstable. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So now what are the elements? Here's where we go. What are the elements of a fraction? When you deal with a fraction, a fraction represents a number that's less than one. <clears throat> what did we say one represents? Allah. One represents Allah, God, correct? Yes, sir. So then if one represents Allah, God in the language of mathematics, then a fraction would represent what type of person? Mm, a clear Mm -hmm. A fraction is they're not they're not themselves somebody else. We're, 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 we're less than one. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, a fraction is someone who's broken. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could say a fraction represents in our language we could say a savage, a person that has lost the knowledge of himself and is living a beast life. Yes, sir. You translate that into the tech. When we have lost the knowledge of ourself, that is called being out of valence. Mm. And to live a beast life represents dramatization and aberration. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So a fraction represents a number less than one. So if I have the number of one, one half, obviously one half is less than one, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so the elements are you got basically three elements in that fraction. You have what's called the numerator, which is the top number. You have the bottom number, which is called the denominator. And then you have that line in between. That line in between the one and the two, that represents the operation called division. Mm. Y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. Top yes. number is the numerator. Bottom number is the denominator, and the line in between is designating the operation of division. Yes, sir. Okay. The word numerator means one that numbers. And it is the number that is divided. Okay. The bottom number is the denominator and that is the number that divides. Now, I'm going to throw this out here. If the top number is the one that numbers, one that calculates, one that has cognitions, and the bottom number is the one that divides, what could we say these two numbers represent with regards to the mind? A double-minded person double-minded person what would the top number represent in the language of dianetics yeah and analytical analytical, and analytical yeah. mind and the denominator would represent what reactive I, mind. I see you flowing over there sister jackson <laughs> 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 okay 
Okay, so we, we here's the fraction, and we're using this to understand the mind. Top number is the, we can say is the analytical, bottom number is the reactive. Everyone does that. Does everyone flow with that? Everyone understands that. Yes, sir. Okay. One that numbers, one that comprehends, one that understands. Okay. Denominator is one that divides. Divide means to become separated or disunited. It means to disagree. So if the numerator represents one that has the ability to understand and the denominator is one that disunites or breaks, then how can a fraction represent the PC from the perspective of Dianetics? And we just, and we just answered that question. The fraction could represent the double-minded person. Okay. Uh -huh. so we're going to show three types of fractions, and this is where we're going to we'll end it, and we'll pick it up, God willing, next week. So, with the three types of fractions, you have what's called the proper fraction. That's where the denominator, the bottom number, is greater than the numerator. Okay. So, if you look at the number three over five. Okay, three fifths. That means, three. you know, it's funny. I didn't think of it until just now. Three fifths of a human being, and that, and I, I didn't think of that when I wrote that number down there. Three fifths. Uh, okay, so when you say three fifths, when your denominator is larger than the numerator, you're always going to have a number that's less than one. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now I'm gonna show you what I mean. A number. Less than one. I was gonna say no, sir. I don't understand. No, that. no. That's why. That's why I, I got to show you that we gotta, we gotta, we gotta deal with it. If I take seven tenths, okay, seven tenths is less than one. It is. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So these numbers are all numbers that are smaller than one. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now let's 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 do some math real quick. Everyone see my whiteboard? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> if I do three fifths, okay, that is the same as saying three divided by five. Okay, that's the same as saying three divided by five. Because remember that bar in the middle is division. You got, you, got, you got something, Sister Jacqueline? Okay, you're just flowing with it, okay. So now if I was to rewrite this, I would write five here, and I put the three on the inside. Now then you might say, well, how would you divide that? One number is smaller than the other. How many times can five go into three? None. So I add a zero. Well, yeah, zero. Mm -hmm. Put your decimal point. Bring down a zero. Now six. How many times can five go into 30? Six. Six. Six times five is what? 30. 30. And what's my remainder? Nine. Mm -hmm. Zero. Okay. So three fifths as a fraction is the same as saying 0.6 as a decimal. Right. Sister Jacqueline had another aha moment. <laughs> now, how do you check your math? The cycle of action is you do the work, you got to check the math. So if this is if five divided into 30 is 0 0.6. If I'm using division to solve it, I have to use the inverse to check it, which is multiplication. 0 0.6 times five. 
And what's five times six? 30. 30. I started out with three. When you do the decimal point, you got to put your decimal point here. Okay. So really the six times five is zero. I'm going to carry my three. Bring my three. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. If I say seven over 10, That's the same as saying 10 divided into seven. This mm -hmm. number right here represents the reactive mind. This is your analytical mind. Mm -hmm. And when the reactive mind is greater than the analytical mind, it reduces you to less than yourself, correct? Yes, sir. How many times will 10 go into seven? Zero. Zero. What's your decimal point? Drop a zero. 10 goes into seven, how many times? Seven. Seven. 70. What's the remaining? Zero. Zero. Seven tenths is the same as saying 0. 0.7. Okay. Well, look mine. Yes. If it has a remainder, are you going to do one with a remainder? Yes, ma'am, I am. I am okay. going to do one with a remainder. I'm going to do that next. Okay. Because you can't you can't do remainders when it's uh, a proper fraction, but I, I'm going to show you how to do it. Oh, okay. I'm going, to do, I'm going to do it all that way. You can kind of see that as well. Okay. Okay. So do we understand, can we, can we see how a fraction can be a demo kit that represents the relationship between the analytical mind and the reactive mind? I see it. Okay, and again, if you don't get it all today, that's fine. Send me the emails. I'll be more than happy to work each individual through whatever to understand it. But the more we do it, the more you'll be able to you'll grasp it. So three types of fractions. You have a proper fraction, then you have what's called an improper fraction. Improper fraction is when the numerator is greater than the denominator or the numerator is equal to the denominator. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. The numerator is greater than the denominator. So 10 over two or 15 over three, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the whiteboard again. Okay, so if I said 10 over two, now think of, the relationship between the analytical mind and the reactive mind. If my analytical mind has more power than my reactive mind, then that represents what? A whole number. You're gonna you're gonna get a whole number. Yes, yes, because this is the same as saying two divided into ten, oh. and two goes into ten. How many times? Five. Five times. Five times two to the 10, that's zero. So what's the inverse? If two, if, if five is the result or the quotient, two into 10, that means five times two should give me 10. Does that make sense? Right. 10 divided by five should give me two. Does that make sense? So what yes, do you, you have an ARC triangle here, basically. Mm -hmm. All these will be connected. Two goes into 10, five times. Five goes into 10, two times. And two times five is 10. Mm -hmm. That's how you check your math. Yes, sir. 
Does everyone follow that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Now let me give you this one. If we said, if I say someone give me a two digit number. 23. 23. That's a isn't that I mean, that's a prime number, right? That's okay. That's okay. Now someone mm -hmm. give someone give me a denominator, a smaller number than 23. Five. Okay, five. Okay, this is what you call an improper fraction because mm -hmm. the numerator is greater than the denominator. So now if I rewrite this, I'm going to say five into 23. But I'm going to show you three ways to do this. And I think for some of you, this might remove an engram, mathematical engram. How many times will five go into 23? Four. 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 Four times five is what? 20. 20. 23 <laughs> minus 20 is what? Three. Three. Okay, that's four with a remainder of three. Mm -hmm. How do you check the math? What's five times four? 20. What's 20 plus three? 23. Mm -hmm. It'll bring you right back to that number right there. Does everyone follow that one? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do this again. Five into 23 goes how many times? Four. Four. Four, Four times five is? 20. What do I have left over? Three. 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 You bring that up here. Mm -hmm. You bring the five over. And that is the same number written as a fraction. Mm-hmm. Oh. Now, how do you check the math? What's five times four? 20. 20. What's 20 plus three? Three. Bring right back that number right here. Okay. Hmm. Third way of writing this. We already know that this is going to be four, correct? Yes, yeah. sir. Four times five is 20. Gives me a three, correct? Yes, sir. And five going to three? No, sir. Decimal point, zero. How many times will five go into 30? Six, Six times. Six times. Six mm. times five is? 30. That's the same one, that's the same answer as a decimal. Mm -hmm. How do you check this? 4.6. times five. Mm -hmm. Wow, finger. So what's six times five? 30. 30. Put my zero, bring up my three. Five times four is? 20. Plus three? 23. 23. 23. Okay. No I got one decimal point here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That means I move one decimal point this way. Mm -hmm. Come on, finger. Let's get this thing. I put my decimal point there, which means it's 23. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So that's the three different ways of doing division. As a remainder, as a fraction, and as a decimal. Did anyone get any case gain off that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sir. sir. It's yes, very sir. easy for yes, me. Sir. Okay. I've got some case gain off the one before that one. This one right here or this one? No, the one before that one, the um 10 over 5. Oh, 10 over 5? Mm -hmm. Or the 10 over, was that 10 over 5 or 10, 10, over, 10, 10, 10 over 2? 10 over 2. Mm -hmm. Now, the, how, the, many of you, how many of you said this in your mind? That's it? That's all it is? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. I've said it, sir. 
I, I can almost see your reaction as we're going. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, and that 10 over two, the case gain I got was that uh, you, you, you come up with a whole number mm -hmm. and made me think of if you go into a room and the room is filled with aberrated people, but you have more attention units than that which is in the room, you can still come out whole. Yes, you can be in the world, but not of it, because you still have some, you still have some attention units. Yes, sir. But if you're already low on the tone scale and you enter a room full of low tone scale people, what's going to happen to you? You're going to come out a fraction. <laughs> you're going to come out a fraction. Okay. Okay. And obviously, when both numbers are the same, then that's always going to equal one. Does that make sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. 12 divided by 12 is one. Six divided by six is one. That's a golden rule. Any number over itself is going to equal one. Mm -hmm. But then you have what's called a mixed fraction. A mixed fraction is composed of a whole number and a fraction. Okay, so if I say five and two thirds or 14 and seven tenths, what's the significance of 14 and seven tenths? Does any of us remember 14 and seven tenths? Hmm. 14 and seven tenths? That's not pi, is it? No, that's not pi. But if you look in the problem book, it talks about the atmosphere 14 and 7 tenths pounds per square inch is, is the number that's in our problem book. That's the weight of the atmosphere. Oh. Okay. So now if I, if I have five and two thirds, if I wanted to write this as what's called an improper fraction, and we just did this a second ago. So this is just almost like showing you this all over again. Three times five is what? 15. And then 15 plus two is what? 17. So that's the same as saying 17 over three. Mm -hmm. And then you would do the reverse. Three goes into 17 how many times? Uh, four, five. Five, which is 15. And then 17 minus 15 equals what? Two. Two. Two which gives you the two thirds, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So whenever, whenever, if the top number is your analytical mind and the bottom number is the reactive mind, whenever your analytical mind is greater than the reactive mind, then you have some in reserve to keep you as a whole number, correct? Yes, sir. But when your reactive mind is greater than your analytical mind, you become a what? A fraction. A fraction or a person that's broken. Broken. Now, Brother Lukman, the whole number, okay, is five, but then you got two thirds. So how right. would you say that in the Dianetics um, language? Because you have a whole number, which is the five, but then you have a fraction, which is the two thirds. Well, let's look at it like this. If you look at it as far as And again, this, anyone can look at it from their own perspective. The way I'm looking at this is when I get a mixed number, that's just showing that my reserve tank in my analytical mind, I, I have a base, I have a reserve tank in my analytical mind now. Mm -hmm. I have something to work with. So even though I have this relationship between the analytical and reactive mind, this fraction doesn't mean anything because I have this whole number standing here. Okay. Okay. So because I have a whole number, because this is almost like you could say a demo kit on another level of the analytical mind and the reactive mind. Mm -hmm. It's just that now my analytical mind has more, a little more, a little more juice in it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, sir, it does. A lot more juice. Okay, five. You, have lot, you have a lot more juice now. Yeah, yes, sir. 
Now, where I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you this to plant the seed of something we're going to do next week. If I was to say uh, subtract, um, let's see. If I was to say subtract. I think I can do this. If I say subtract. This is just for the fun of it. Subtract this this from this one. In order to subtract five thirds from five and two thirds, what would you have to do? You would you have. Can't, you can't subtract five from two, correct? No, sir. Okay. You would have to borrow from the whole number. Okay. And make the two a twelve. <laughs> and you wouldn't necessarily. You wouldn't necessarily make it. Let's see. If we were to do, let's see. How would I write? The the, the point is this. Once you understand how to do subtraction with fractions, everything else after that is easier. Because multiplication and division of fractions, multiplication and division is really the same thing. You have to convert that whole number in order to convert it to a fraction and then borrow. Does that make sense? But that's just planting the seed so I can get you to come back next week where we can start actually doing some of these operations. Mm -hmm. lay, lay pressure on your mind, in, a, in other words. Brother Lupin. Because <laughs> I, I want to go ahead and finish this because time, time, is, time is upon us. Yes, time is upon us. Uh, can I do this today? I think I can end it on this one. Fractions in the tone scale. Okay. So when the numerator is greater than the denominator, what type of person would that be? That would be a person high on the tone scale? That would be a person that's high on the tone scale. Okay, because the, the numerator is greater than the denominator. It means their analytical mind is greater than the reactive mind. Mm -hmm. That means they, they'll have a number that's greater than one. Okay, so now if you look at the tone scale based on these three areas, if I have numbers greater than one, equal to one, and less than one, how can we connect that to the tone scale? Numbers greater than one could be high in the tone scale. And let's say numbers equal to one can be that borderline, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The borderline would be what, 2.5? 2.5, okay. And then numbers less than one would be the areas that are below, 2.0 and below, correct? Yes, sir. So divide the tone scale in half, and there's your fraction. Numbers above, numbers below, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So when the numerator, the one that comprehends, is less than the denominator, the one that reduces what type of individual would you have? That's someone who's low tone, correct? Yes, sir. My low tone or my reactive mind is greater than my analytical mind. Mm -hmm. So when there's balance, that means I'm right at one. I'm 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 I'm, I'm just I'm being born into the God level, but I need to get I need to get greater than increase my tone so that I don't fall beneath, uh, beneath correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, so quick summary. So the law of substitution allows, so this was based on last week's as well. The student is able to bring a better understanding of mathematics, physics, and science by finding the equivalence relations between the concepts. That means is that we're taking mathematical concepts and we're finding how, how does this concept relate to Dianetics? How does this concept relate to our supreme wisdom? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Seeing how these things are related. And see, once mm -hmm. you see the relationship, there's no need to understand three separate concepts. When you understand the root knowledge, or as Mother Tynetta would say, the root knowledge, root. <laughs> root, then you can apply that knowledge and begin to master all three.
Mm. See, our lessons is the root knowledge, correct? Yes, sir. And the more we study our supreme wisdom, our lessons, our problem book, we'll begin to see as we study other things, we say, wait a minute, oh, no, I, I, the principle upon which that is built is found in Lost Found Muslim Lesson 2, question number so-and-so. Our, our, our supreme wisdom is a book of formulae, correct? Yes, sir. So we have the root knowledge. We just have to study it. And we would never know that it is the root knowledge unless we study the other knowledges so we know how to apply what we have to that which we wish to gain. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Which is why the 5% are told what? To study the science of what in life? To study some of the things in life? Everything. It says everything, right? Yes, sir. Now, is Dianetics the science of the mind? Yes, sir. So wouldn't everything imply that science is a part of that everything? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So the 5% should be studying also the science of the mind, correct? Yes, sir. Fractions can be used as a demo kit to understand our relationship with Allah God, gain a better understanding of our own mind, and provide the tools to understand the universe. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Mathematical concepts can provide the spiritual parables necessary to gain a higher understanding of the universe in which we live. Does that make sense? Hmm. Trying to trying to make it make sense. Mm -hmm. But 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 we're we're we, we have gone up on a gradient level, correct? Oh yes, sir. Okay. So the question is. How many of us have a better understanding of mathematics and fractions now than we did when we started this morning? Yes, sir. I do. Definitely. Okay. I do, sir. So as long as we have case gain, it doesn't matter. Each one of us is going to have varying degrees of case gain. It just takes practice. And the more we practice, the more we do the problems and work the problems, then what happens is as you do the problems, then you'll begin your own dialogue with the creator. You'll hmm. get your cognitions and your case gain and your and your and your mathematical engrams will begin to fall away. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Questions, comments, statements, anything that anyone has that they would like us to cover before we end our session today. Well, I have a, a, a cognition. Um <laughs> Improper fractions and proper fractions. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's I understand it's so much better in relationship to the mind. Mm -hmm. Um because a proper fraction is when you're broken. That's that's a proper fraction. Mm -hmm. So the numerator has to be higher than the denominator. The analytical, um, I mean the numerator has to be less than the denominator. So the analytical has to be less than the reactive mind. Mm -hmm. So that's a proper fraction. Now you're properly broken. Mm -hmm. Improper fraction is when the analytical mind is higher, is more than the reactive mind. The numerator is greater than the denominator. So you're not broken. It's still a um, written as a fraction, but it's improper because you're not broken. So, so could it be that some of us actually think we're broken, but actually we we actually have more potential than we give ourselves credit for? Yes, sir. We think less of ourselves than what we really are. Yes, Man. yes. Sir. We don't really see the God in ourselves. You when know? we actually tapped into our God, we realized that our numerator is, is greater than our denominator. So we are an improper fraction. We we think we're we think we're less than, but really we have greatness contained in us, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Sister Belinda. This uh class just gave me some mass on the phrase, she's a fraction of herself. You know, we say that a lot of person is a fraction of themselves but mm -hmm. this gets a mass behind it because mm -hmm. if you're a fraction of yourself you just got to find the other part mm -hmm. so, so if you're a fraction if you're if you're three-fifths then what other 
what else do you have to find to become whole? What's three fifths plus what equals one? Two fifths. Two fifths. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in fractions, when you add the numbers, you don't add the denominators, you only add the numerators. So if, if I'm three fifths, if I can find the other two fifths, now I'm whole. I'm one. Now I'm a whole number. I'm one. Wow, that goes back to how we bring ourselves up on the tone scale. Explain it. If we're down to, um, let's say, 2.5, mm -hmm. the borderline, you know, where we can be divided. Mm -hmm. uh, if we go down any further, okay, what do I need to do to bring myself up? I have to go up the tone scale more to get to like 3.5 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what came to my mind. Okay, so now, what did the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad say we should do if we're at different levels? He didn't say levels, but he gave us descriptions of where we are, and no matter where we are, what should we do at that time? Work. You should work. Because mm -hmm. as soon as we work, where are we? Tone 20. Okay, praise be to Allah. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? And then if not, we will go ahead and close it out. All right, family. Praise be to Allah. Uh Sister Jacqueline, if you could give us the end of session processing and then we will close it out in prayer. Yes, sir. Family, please take a moment and prepare yourself for the end of session. And we began. Rapidly sketch over the session just ended. Begin. Thank you. Sketch over what you have been doing again with particular attention to how you have been sitting. Begin. Thank you. Go over the period of the session with regard only to what you have been doing with your hands and things in the exterior world you have heard during this session. Begin. Thank you. Fix your attention upon a pleasant object near you now. Begin. Thank you. And family, let's continue to pray for each member participating in this session, our families and the believers, and continue to believe and do good. And I turn it back over to you, Brother Lumon. Thank you, Sister Jacqueline. Attention prayer. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live. The alone do we serve, then aid do we seek. Please Allah guide us on the straight path, the path upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray to hear thy teaching. Amen. Amen. Assalamu alaikum family. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum family. Assalamu alaikum.